Hello, it's Andy, and welcome to episode 7 of Musical Stories. It's a collection of comical and interesting and sometimes tragic stories about a life in music and my different experiences as a musician. So if you play music, hopefully you can relate to some of the things that I talk about. And here we go, episode 7. So this story is about, uh, we'll just call him Johnny, okay, that's not his real name. But uh, the title of this episode is Fast Scales Aren't Everything. They're the only thing. All right, so the story goes that I was a, a grad student at a university, okay? And, you know, I'd gone through the audition process, and I was in... I had gone there for several semesters already, so I wasn't a new student, you know. It was like my fourth semester, right? So I'd been there for a couple years. And you always had to be in an ensemble in order to be a music major and, and to take private lessons and, you know, to study your instrument with one of their master teachers. You had to participate in an ensemble, okay? You had to play in a group and play with other students and have a trio or a quartet and then you had to perform at the end of the semester. It was a requirement, okay? You couldn't take classes without participating in the ensemble. And that was part of it. Okay, so here we are. I'm, I'm getting ready. It's the first day of a brand new semester, second semester. So it was, you know, the first week of January. And normally, we didn't have brand new students enter in January. Mostly, students came and went on a yearly basis. So it was pretty uncommon that a student would join us during the second semester. But anyways, the story goes that it was the first day of a brand new semester, first week of January, and I've got to go to this class. It's a music reading class and a pedagogy class. That means the study of how you move your hands and your fingers. Um, and there was a lot of music reading also. And uh, it was a, a pretty advanced class. And so here we are. It's going to be the first day. Of course, I get there early. And there's a bench outside, um, outside the classroom where you can sit and wait. And so I sat on the bench. And um, also there sitting next to me was this new student. Okay? We'll say his name's Johnny. And I... With a big beaming smile, you know, I introduced myself. Hey, I'm Andy. And I stuck my hand out, you know, to shake his hand. Welcome to the university. I know you're new. It's great to meet you, you know. And he didn't shake my hand. He just kind of leaned his head back and kind of squinted his eyes a little bit. And he was like, hey, yeah, um... You know, I heard you practicing your scales in the lesson room there. And I was like, yeah, I was just, you know, practicing my, my scales with my metronome and stuff. He's like, well, what number were you on? I was, uh, I got up to 140 today, you know, 140 on the metronome, 16th notes, okay, so four notes per every click, right? So major scales and he was like huh and he kind of leaned his head back you know and sort of stuck his his nose up in the air well you gotta better keep practicing then and I was like great well you know since you're a new student you got to participate in the ensemble it's the first day of a new semester everybody's forming groups everybody has to participate you got to find your own group you got to find a trio or quartet and form them this week. So, do you want to be in my in my group, you know, uh, and find some other guys to play? And so, you know, I'm trying to be friendly. It's the first week of school and it's a brand new student, so he doesn't know his way around. So I offered, hey, why don't you be in my group? I've never heard him play. I don't know what he sounds like. But, hey, you can be in my group and we can look for some guys to play together and, and we'll just, we'll do it. Do you want to do you want to play in the ensemble? And he just basically said, 
you know, I would be too embarrassed to walk out on stage and perform with someone that can't play their scales faster than 140. You're just not fast enough. You know, I can play a scale at 156. And so therefore, you know, you're just not at the level where I am. And so the answer is no. Uh, you know, find some lesser talented people to be in your group. So keep in mind, he was a freshman and had just graduated high school. He was 19 and I was a grad student, right? I was like 35. And so I basically decided just, you know, to use kindness and I was like, well, I'll find some other guys to play with, but thanks anyway, and I wish you the best. I hope that you have a great semester. You're going to love it. You're going to learn a lot. Everything is going to go well for you. You know, welcome to the university. We'll run into each other again, and I wish you the best. And he was like, yeah, whatever. He kind of, he kind of, uh, I remember one of the comments, he's like, oh, you're one of those. Uh, one of those we can all get along kind of people, you know, it kind of irritated him that I was talking to him, I guess. But anyway, so bummer, so I didn't find a guy to play with for the ensemble. I'll just ask the other guys I played with the, the last semester, and so it'll be fine. So, hey, it's time for class. Okay, let's go into class. So he was going into the class, and I was going into the class. A couple other guys showed up. There was about, I don't know, eight people in the class, and the professor showed up a couple minutes late, but that's normal. And um, keep in mind that this was a prestigious university. You know, I had to audition for, the first year I auditioned, I didn't make it. And the second year I auditioned, I didn't make it. And the third, and, and so the teachers were like, if you study with us privately and take lessons, you know, Maybe you could pass your audition someday. So for two years, I studied with one of the uh, instructors there at the university privately in their living room, you know, just paid cash for the lessons, and then I practiced and practiced. Third year, I finally made it, okay? And so there was only like 12 guitar majors in the whole university, right? And they had three professors, and so it was like this brand new building, and it had a recording studio, and practice rooms. The practice rooms had fake reverb. It was like all glossy, right? It was high dollar. They called it, you know, Juilliard of the West or whatever. And so here we are. There's eight of us in the class. Uh, music reading 101, right? And so we talked about what's the best way to introduce music reading and a lot of students were like well you know you gotta teach your students E F G and that's really where you should start string one and the teacher was like yep hey that's a really good idea that's great and another student was like okay you know what we should do we should we should have the students put their fingers on the strings and then begin with their thumb and you know what we'll teach them D first and we'll teach them D E F and hey, it's at the very bottom of the music staff. And so if they learn that first, D, E, F, then we can just go up the music staff and learn the rest of the notes, and it'll all make sense. And so that's the best place to start. And we were like, wow, this is a fascinating class. This is interesting. Okay, Andy, what do you think? And I was like, well, it depends on if you're an electric guitar student and you want to play Randy Rhodes and Shred, or whether you're playing classical guitar and using your fingers. And everyone kind of looked at me like, what are you talking about? Electric guitar? Don't say those words here, please. <laughs> That's not even a consideration. This is only classical music, Andy. Oh, okay. Well, I would teach them all the open strings. E, A, D, G, B, E. And I would show those on the music staff. And then I would have, you know, ten different pieces where you just play the open strings and you read the notes. And the teacher was like, hmm. That might work, and the other students were like, eh, I don't know about that. But anyway, it was a pretty lively discussion. It was an interesting class. But then, 
after that discussion, the teacher was like, all right, so music reading class, but I just want to see where everybody's at. So put your books away, take your instrument out. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a test the first day of class. Ready? I'm going to name 10 songs. And he got out on the chalkboard. He wrote the name of 10 songs. Twinkle Little Star, Mary Had a Little Lamb, <laughs> Ode to Joy. <laughs> You know, these famous uh, beginner, you know, kids' songs, right? And he was like, no books, no sheet music, no internet. I want you to sound out each one of these songs right here in front of me right now. Ready, go. Okay, Andy, play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star by ear. Go. And I was like... Are you serious? <laughs> and I said, hey, I thought this was a college level class. And he looked at me and he was like, can you do it or not? And so I played it, you know, note for note. I was teaching the Suzuki method at the time, right? Actually, I was a member of the Colorado Suzuki Association Board of Directors at the time. And uh, so I played, you know, Twinkle in the key of G, just like it has in the, in the book there. And I asked him if he wanted me to play the accompaniment part with the chords and, and harmonize it. And, and I did a little bit of that. And he's like, no, you don't have to play the melody and the chords at the same time. Thanks, it's nice that you can do that. But just the melody will suffice for the test today. You pass that one. Okay, now I'll play Mary Had a Little Lamb. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I played it, you know. Okay, now I'll play Ode to Joy. Okay, and then I played it. All right, now play. And so he just named the ten songs. And we went around, and every person took turns trying to sound out a famous tune just completely by ear, right? Famous songs. Easy kid songs. And it got around to Johnny. And there's Johnny. And, okay, Johnny, it's your turn. Play Twinkle Little Star. Go. And so he played the first note, and then he was like, I can't find it. Couldn't find a second note, you know. And um, the rest of us had already went. The rest of us had already received our grade, okay. And so we sat there for about 10 or 15 minutes and watched Johnny try to sound out Twinkle Twinkle Little Star by ear on one string with one finger and we watched as he struggled and struggled and struggled. One note into the piece. Couldn't find the second note. And so everybody's looking at their watch and we're looking at the clock on the wall and it's like the teacher finally turns to us and is like, okay the rest of you can go. I'll stay and work with Johnny for a while. There's still half an hour left of class, but you've received your grades, and so you can go. I'll see you at the next class. Okay, and so we all left, and Johnny stayed and continued to have his test. And so uh, everybody kind of parted ways, and a couple of us went down to lunch, and we had, we had our lunch down, downstairs. And then after you know, we had our lunch, and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go back to the practice room, and I'm going to go practice for a while upstairs. The practice rooms are on the top level, right? So I go up the stairs, and I'm walking down the hallway, and um, going down the hall to get to the practice rooms, and I pass the classroom, <clears throat> and uh, the door was open, and there's the professor kind of leaning forward, and, and there's Johnny with his guitar, and tears are streaming down his face, and his lower lip is just kind of quivering, and he's just, he's just sobbing, you know, right there in front of the teacher. And the teacher's like, okay, come on, I, I'm going to give you the first note, and the second note. Okay, now try to find the third note, Johnny. And Johnny's like, 
couldn't find it. The end. That's the end of that story. Okay, so what can I say about that one? So the um, moral of the story is, you know, you should always be kind to people when you meet them. You never know where they came from in their life. You never know what kind of experiences they've had or, or where they've been or, or what's happened to them or, or what skills they have or don't have. And so the general rule is just be kind to people. Even if they're not kind to you, just be kind back because, you know, if they're not kind to you, that says something about them. But if you're kind to them, that says something about you. You can only react, you can only control your own reaction. You can't control them or change them. So I wasn't about to convince Johnny, well, you know, scales aren't everything. Um, yeah, you can play fast. That's great. You deserve success. You practiced, you know. Um, he was fast. He was faster than me, okay? I can't play my scales that fast like he can, and that's okay. Um, but anyway, I don't know what else to say about the fact that he couldn't figure out those songs. And you know, I didn't mock him or say anything negative to him. Uh, I just let it be how it was and moved on. But I'm not sure whatever happened to him later. I don't know whether he graduated or went into music or... I don't know where he is today, but that story can inspire us. Like the next time someone you know says something to you that isn't kind, or or points out your faults, or says you know you're not good enough, or I'm better than you, just remember that story and, and just let it be, just let it roll off your shoulders, just keep moving forward, and you know try to find a way that you can be kind to that person, and uh, who knows, maybe you'll run into them again and they'll remember that you're kind to them and uh, who knows maybe they'll change maybe you'll be happy that you didn't burn any bridges that you were uh, kind to them and so basically just be kind all the time and um, that's the end of that story okay well I hope to see you soon in episode 8 thanks for watching <laughs>